I'm Mauricio Umansky, CEO and founder of the agency, and you're watching Behind the Brand. Hi, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today I'm here with CEO and founder of the agency, Mauricio Umansky. Mauricio, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for having me on here. I usually ask my guests, how'd you get this job? <laughs> Well, it was a long story how I got this job. I, uh, I had to start the company, right? <laughs> I founded the company and, and, uh, about five years ago and uh, with the idea to really uh, redefine real estate and change the experience of what was happening in real estate. Um, I thought that there was an amazing opportunity uh, in doing that. And, um, you know, we started the agency. So we're here in Beverly Hills in your sprawling, super creative looking office. Love this vibe. Um, is this what you've always done your whole life? No, before uh, selling real estate, I used to be in uh, the textile industry. I worked for my father. Um, we had our ups and downs in that. Uh, I got into the clothing industry. I had my ups and downs in that. Um, I finally got into real estate uh, about 19 years ago uh, when I had my final down. I was down and out. And uh, my wife, uh, I had just had my baby, Alexia, and my wife and I, uh, she looked at me and she said to me, hey, Mauricio, let's get our real estate licenses together. We made it a date night. And uh, we literally went out to go get our real estate licenses together. And uh, here we are now. <laughs> so for those who don't know what you're doing with the agency and, and how you're changing the game, flipping really the script on the typical real estate model, break it down for us. So basically, you know, real estate is a model that, in my opinion, became ancient and archaic. Uh, what ended up happening is that a lot of the brokers and the owners of the uh, real estate firms really started looking at it more as a real estate business, uh, not as a brokerage service business, okay? And what ended up happening, it started becoming a numbers game. So basically, uh, the big boys said, hey, I'm, I, I want to grow, I want to get big. The bigger I get, the better I, I am. Um, we're more of a boutique firm, okay? We're more of a Goldman Sachs, if you will. Uh, more service-oriented, not big. So what ended up happening is the larger firm said, I've got 10,000 square feet of space. I can fit 150 people in it. Uh, it cost me $10,000 a month, and as long as I make $15,000 a month, I'm good to go, right? And the, the, the agents, because of the nature of the business, it's an independent contractor, right? And when you have an independent contractor, what ends up happening is that they become the business. So everybody started talking about, let's brand an agent, a specific agent, instead of creating an advisory business, right? And so what ended up happening is that the splits became 90-10, uh, 955 in favor of the agent and away from you know from uh, the the remaxes of the world the Keller Williams of the world etc cetera, etc cetera. and what ended up happening is that the brokerage firms forgot about giving services to their agents, forgot about giving advisory roles to their agents. And in, in essence, what ended up happening is that you just have a whole bunch of independent people working under one roof, uh, but not working together, not working collaboratively. So, you know, basically what we decided to do is to create a company that gave you a lot more services, uh, that gave B2B services, so meaning to the agents, and also B2C services, meaning to the consumer. Right, so we're a much more oriented, uh, service-oriented uh, clientele. I always like to use the, uh, the the expression, you know, that you know Richard Branson when he uh, uh, redefined uh, uh, airline travel. You know, he he still flies people from point A to point B. He changed the experience of flying, right? From the minute you enter, from the minute you book your flight, to the minute you enter the terminal, to the minute you get on the on the plane. Everything about the ad experience is different. And that's what we've done into the real estate world. We've changed the experience of how to buy and sell real estate, knowing that our business is still buying and selling real estate. I think it's super smart. How do you make that experience scale? Because I think you're super onto something. You know, UI and UX is a very tech term, right? You know, user experience, user interface. But in essence, you are redesigning the customer experience. The the broker experience or the B2B experience, how do you make that scale? Well, it's very, it's, it's, it's difficult, but simple. Okay. Um, number one is it's about, you know, changing the barriers to entry, right? So the majority of the companies accept anybody that can get the real estate license. We accept only the best. Okay. Uh, in order to become an agent at the agency and to be able to say, I, you know, I, I, proudly wear this shirt or I get to hold the agency flag, uh, you got to be the best. You got to be knowledgeable. You got to be ethical. We have one rule. It's called the no asshole rules. We have no assholes at this place. You're an asshole, you get out. <laughs> 
Yeah, let's let's explore that a little further. So, what are some of the concrete qualifications? I mean, is it about how you look on paper, or is it about your accomplishments, or is it cultural attitude, personality? What is that? Yeah, I think it's beyond. It's it's cultural. It's attitude. It's about service oriented. It's somebody that has the that that takes the brokerage world more as an advisory role than than how do I make a sale and make the next deal. Uh, we're, we, we consider ourselves not real estate agents, we consider ourselves real estate advisors, right? Um, and the client, the agents that work at our company have to understand that they're working for a common cause. It's, it's like a uh, CAA or William, uh, or, or William Morris or, uh, you know, one of the, or in Dev, you know, WME or one of those companies where you're hiring, you, you, an actor says, I, I, you know, my agent is CAA. They don't say my agent is John Smith. Right, and what's happened in the real estate world is that people say my agent is John Smith, okay, uh, and we're trying to change that so that people say my agent is the agency, right? And so the the agent that works at the agency cannot be so egocentrical about themselves. They have to understand that it's more of a common collaborative role, and the fact that we all together can come and service the consumer makes us a lot more powerful to the consumer, makes us sell more real estate, uh, allows us to sell the real estate faster at a higher speed, and allows us to sell the real estate at higher prices. So beyond just like being selfish and just chasing the next sale, what makes someone a jerk? What gets someone fired around here? Oh my gosh, um, you know, we've had, you know, some agents that were quite honestly top producing agency, uh, agents here. One in particular that uh, constantly got us into trouble, uh, legal lawsuits, um, lied to clients, I really was just worried about selling, okay? And anything that this person needed to do to sell, it was cool. Uh, let's change gears a little bit and talk about entrepreneurs. You've done a lot of things in your life, you have a lot of experience, and you hopped from different agents. Uh, you hopped around from industry to industry and landed here. Uh, you're now trying to rewrite the script. That's really cool. Do you think being an entrepreneur is something that we're born with or is it something we can learn? I think being an entrepreneur is a, is a characteristic that one is born with. Um, there, you know, I believe that there's a lot of different things that motivate people in life. People are motivated by money. People are motivated by greed. People are motivated by uh, competition. Um, people are motivated out of fear. Okay, I'm, I'm scared that I, I'm going to do that. And there's a certain motivation, a certain characteristic trait that motivates an entrepreneur. And that's somebody that's willing to take risks, that's willing to go out and, and change things and differentiate themselves from the world. Um, you know, and then somebody you know, the, in my opinion, the successful entrepreneurs are the guys that say, I want to be disruptive. I want to change something. I want to create something. So then it just takes something from own, wanting to own your own business. There's the entrepreneur that wants to own their own business because they want to be able to go surf or they want to go to the golf course. And then there's the entrepreneur that says, I want to disrupt an industry. I want to change a business. I, 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 I'm onto something and they want to be number one and they want to compete and they have an, an end goal in the business. Were you always like that though, growing up? I, I, my, my motivation happens to be competitiveness. I'm just a competitive guy by nature. Uh, I was uh, very competitive in sports. Uh, I was a skier, I played soccer, I played uh, tennis, um, golf. Uh, I'm still extremely competitive in all uh, sports. Uh, so yeah, growing up, I've been, I've been competitive all my life. So you're originally from Mexico. Were you born to privilege or did you have to kind of build your way to the top? So I was born as a, uh, with, with some privilege. Um, I was born into a great family. My grandfather uh, arrived from Russia to Mexico. We're Mexican Jews. Um, he arrived with nothing. He made some money. I was generation two. Uh, my father grew into his business. Uh, unfortunately, when I was in my early 20s, uh, we made some you know, business gambles as entrepreneurs do, do and our family lost uh, a ton of money. Um, and then I had a kind of restart and start over. I actually ended up having to drop out of college in order to restart uh, and get my business going. Um, and so I've had one of those up, you know, grow, I grew up with privilege, went down to the rags and, uh, and I enjoyed uh, the lifestyle of privilege way too much. And that was my motivation to get back up here. So talk to me about what keeps you up at night now. I mean, you're running what looks like a really sprawling agency and things are going great, but what are you worried about? So what keeps me up uh, at night now is uh, uh, I feel like I'm a father right now to, uh, you know, 200 and some I'd people that work for me. Um, I, I, I really care about our people and I care about them having a job from now and forever and for how long, however long they want to have a job for, okay? Um, and so I personally see myself as a parent to everybody um, and therefore my decisions that I make have to be extremely important because they, they affect 
Today, 200 people. Tomorrow, 600 people. The next day, 1,000 people, okay? Um, that's one thing that keeps me up at night. The second thing that keeps me up at night is uh, how we're gonna grow this business. And it's tremendously important, but I need it to grow as always as a boutique, okay? We're a, we're a boutique firm. I wanna be into multiple markets, but I don't wanna be a huge business. I don't wanna be like the Douglas Elements of the world uh, or the compasses of the world that are just looking for size um, and are looking for growth and then the losing control of the growth. So my, my, my worry is grow strategically, smart, intelligently, um, but keep that boutique feeling to it. How do you do that exactly? Um, I mean, you got 200 people, you're at the helm, you've got the vision, but like how do you make sure that people at the ground level are getting that message and living the culture? I think one of the important things is uh, um, having people understand um, you have to hire great people, okay? That's number one. But what's great? How do you define great? So you have to be willing to pay for talent. You have, to be, you have to hire people that can think on their feet, can be smart on their feet, and can make their own decisions. One of the mottos that we have here is uh, if you're not making mistakes, you're not trying hard enough, okay? We're not afraid of mistakes. I, nobody in this, in, at the agency will ever be fired because they tried something new, tried to be innovative, and made a mistake and it didn't work out. You might get fired if you don't try anything. Okay, <laughs> uh, but you're not going to get fired for trying stuff. Okay, we believe in making mistakes. Period. End of story. So we need people that are willing to go in that. Now, if you have that, then you have a great foundation, right? Because now everybody can think on their own. Everybody understands the culture. So all my job is now is just to say, create a culture, create a boutique, create services, give everybody what they need, but allow everybody to think on their own and to be and to be uh, proactive on their own. Similar to the Ritz-Carlton experience, right? If you go into Ritz-Carlton and you have a housekeeper and you tell the housekeeper that you want uh, uh, something. It's ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen, right? Um, she, she has the power to up to, I think it's $500 or $2,500 to make you as a customer happy. The housekeeper does, okay? You don't have to go past that. So what we try to do is try to create and have people that can do that on their own as well. So autonomy is great. Giving people power to make decisions is awesome. Has there been any kind of innovation or impact that's been made in a place in the company that you didn't expect? You know, one of the hardest things to do is to take an industry that has so much life and years and, and dynasties and be innovative in it, right? And one of the things that we've been trying to do is how do we become innovative in that industry? And what we've done, quite honestly, is, is uh, in technology. Okay, um, and we've kept our so we've kept it very quiet. We've been very confidential of really what we've done. But everybody at the agency works under one CRM system. Uh, we we our, our email blasts go out to 250,000 people around the world. Uh, yeah, we really all collaborate and communicate, which is so anti real estate. Every, it, yeah, real estate is all about independent contractors. How much clients do I have? How many clients do I have? What, a, what listings do I have? It's all me, 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 me. And at the agency, it's all us, 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 us. And we've done that through technology. You know, a lot of people who watch this show, they're entrepreneurs. They're in technology or they're in consumer packaged goods or they're in automotive. They're in different industries, but they are doing their thing, right? Um, Give us some good advice, you know, people who are just getting started. Maybe talk up to that 20 to 25 year old, you know, just getting ready to start their career. What would you say to them getting started right now? Um, I think that, you know, a young entrepreneur that wants to do something, uh, number one has to have courage, okay? Number two, you have to have certainty in yourself, okay? Never doubt yourself. Have knowledge, prepare yourself with knowledge, give yourself as much information as you can into an industry or into whatever it is that you wanna do. But ultimately, once you make a decision, have certainty making that decision. Go down that path, take it down. Don't be afraid to make that mistake, okay? People that stop, the people that have the fear and that stop have doubt in themselves. And it's a trait that as an entrepreneur, you can never get ahead of you have doubt in yourself. You have to have certainty once you make the decision.